Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum and today we will be looking at fertilization and cleavage formation. Fertilization and cleavage formation. We will start with the definition of fertilization. So, what is fertilization? Fertilization can be defined as the process by which a sperm pierces the ovum in order to produce a zygote. I repeat, fertilization is defined as a process by which a sperm pierces the ovum in order to form a zygote. So, what happens in fertilization? And before I go into that, fertilization takes place at the ampulla. At the uterine tube, the ampulla part of the uterine tube. That is where fertilization takes place. So, what happened is that you remember that during oogenesis, that the secondary oocyte was arrested at the metaphase state. So, it is until fertilization that an ovum is formed. But if fertilization does not occur, the secondary oocyte degenerates. But once fertilization occurs, the ovum, the secondary oocyte that was arrested at the metaphase state, become an ovum. So what happened further is that during ovulation, which is at the 14th day, the matured ovarian follicle ruptures, and once it ruptures, it releases the ovum that lies inside of it, and this ovum travels or gets trapped in the fibricated part of the uterine tube, and it travels through the uterine tube. For three days, it gets to the ampulla. You remember I told us that fertilization occurs at the ampulla part of the uterine tube. So it travels for three days and goes to the ampulla part of the uterine tube to sit there, to await a sperm to fertilize it. So this is an ovum here, sitting at the ampulla part of the uterine tube, waiting for a sperm to fertilize it. So what happened in fertilization is after a uh, uh, ovulation, that is, after the uh, ovum must have been released and sexual intercourse happened, the, the sperm that was released into the female genital tract are millions of sperm, but only a few hundred survive it to the, around the ovum, a few hundred survives it down to the uh, uh, ovum. So, a few hundred uh, lying around the ovum, only one eventually pierces the zona pellucida. So after the sperm pierces the zona pellucida, that is when the uh, zona reaction and the acrosomic reaction must have happened. The head of the sperm separates from the middle piece and the tail eh, and go to the and go to the ovum to form the male pronucleus, while the female nucleus, the nucleus in the ovum, forms the female pronucleus. So that is how the male and female pronucleus are formed. So you can see the female pronucleus and the male pronucleus forming the male and female pronuclei. So this is the concept of what happened in fertilization. So, if you look at now, in the ovary, the ovarian follicle during ovulation ruptures and gets to the uterine tube. The ovum goes to the ampulla part of the uterine tube and sits there to wait for a sperm to fertilize it. Then, if intercourse occurs, a million of sperm is released into the female genital tract, but a few hundred makes it around the ovum and only one now pierces the zona pellucida to fertilize the, the ovum. And if that one sperm that pierces the zona pellucida separates from the tail and its middle piece, and the head of the sperm, remember that uh, the uh, head of the sperm forms from a nucleus. Remember when it, we treated it? So the head of the sperm forms the male pronucleus, while the nucleus of the ovum forms the female pronucleus. So, look at it. What happened here is that the male and the female pronuclei join together to form the zygote. So, the two of them join together to form the zygote. 
So, having understand the concept of fertilization, let's go over to cleavage formation. So, before we go over to cleavage formation, let's talk about sex determination or how to determine the sex of a child. The ovum contain or the female contain uh, S chromosome, while the sperm contain either the X or the Y chromosome. So, if a sperm carrying X chromosome fertilizes the ovum, you remember that the, in fact, the sex of a child is determined by the man or the male because the female X chromosome is there already. It is the man that determines the sex of a child depending on the type of chromosome that uh, uh, it gives to the or the type of chromosome that joins with that of the female. So if a sperm carrying S chromosome joins with the ovum, a girl is formed. But if a sperm carrying Y chromosome joins with the ovum, a boy is formed. So if this join with this, you get something like uh, this. You get something like SS, which is which is a girl. But if this join with this, you get something like this. X, Y, which is a boy. So here a girl is formed, here a boy is formed. So and to make this make sense is that the uh, male sperm that or the sperm that carries S chromosome always lasts longer than the sperm carrying Y chromosome. They are actually slow. They don't move faster. They don't move faster, but they last longer. But the one carrying Y chromosome moves very fast, but die within a short period of time. So if the eggs have been already been released and a sperm carrying Y chromosome meets the you know they don't last longer. So once this egg is already sitting here and these two are released, the one carrying Y chromosome will meet the ovum faster. But if this is not sitting here already, maybe uh, at the 11th day. You remember ovulation happened at the 14th day. So ovulation happened at the 14th day and by then the egg is released at the 14th day. But if maybe intercourse happened maybe at the 10th, 11th day, you notice, or the 12th day, you notice that these ones must have died. It is only the sperm carrying S chromosome that will last till the 14th day when the ovum will be released. And that is when this sperm carrying S chromosome will fertilize the ovum and a gel is formed. But if intercourse happened at the 14th or 15th day, there is no way this uh, one carrying S chromosome will reach the ovum first because they are actually slower. It is this one carrying Y chromosome that will reach the ovum faster. But if they reach there and they did not see any ovum, they die off. But this one will go there and remain there until an ovum comes. So that is it. So how to determine the sex of a child is if a parent wants to have a male child, that means that when you calculate the female cycle, know when the, uh, the egg is supposed to be released, know the cycle of a female and when the ovum is supposed to be released. From when the ovum is supposed to be released, you know the exact day to have intercourse. If you want a boy child, you know that you have intercourse at that exact day the egg is released or at the next day. But if you want a girl child, that means that you have intercourse maybe three days before the egg is released. So that is how to determine the sex of a child. So let's go over to the cleavage formation now. So we've come to cleavage formation. But before we explain cleavage formation, you remember that here that the male and female pronuclei join together to form zygote or to form a zygote. So that is what we did us to cleavage formation. 
So cleavage can be defined as the process by which the these two cell stage, that is the male and female pronuclei, divides. So you know that for uh, any growth to happen in the body, cells must divide. So the division of that cell is known as cleavage. So cleavage is all about cells dividing. The male and female pronuclei that we are joined together to form a zygote begin to divide and that is the basis of other or further development in the in the body. So looking at here we have a two cell stage. You can see the two cell stage. Now after this two cell stage the one of the cell divides to give rise to a three cell stage. There is nothing like a one cell stage because it started from the male and female pronuclei joining together. So that is it here. So one of the cells divides to form a three cell stage. And from the three cell stage, the other cell divides to form four cell stage. And this is what continues to happen until eight cell stage is formed here until eight cell stage is formed here. Now, immediately the eight cell stage is formed, the eight cells begin to divide again to form the 16 cell stage. So this is the 16 cell stage. And this structure now, you notice the difference between this and this. This looks like a mulberry. So, and that is why it is called the morula. At this stage now, it has two cell mass. The outer cell mass, which is the ones outside here, you can see the ones outside here, is the outer cell mass, and the one inside here, the inner cell mass. So this outer cell mass is known as trophoblast. Why the inner cell mass is known as embryoblast, embryoblast, so the outer cell mass gave rise to uh, the placenta and the rest of them why the inner cell mass gave rise to the main embryo and that is why it is called the embryoblast and this happened at the 16 cell stage now immediately this happened the uterine fluid began to enter the the dividing cells shifting the inner cell mass to one part of the of the to one side shifting the inner cell mass to one side and the outer cell mass is already there thereby creating a cavity and if you look at here now this the this cavity now is created because the uterine fluid shifted the inner cell mass to one part and this cavity is known as the blastocele this cavity is known as the blastocele why this is the the embryoblast or the inner cell mass and this is the outer cell mass or the trophoblast now this part that the inner cell mass come to lie is known as the embryonic pole why the other part that the cavity for is formed is known as the ab embryonic pole so at this same stage now this is 32 cell stage and this stage is known as the blastocyst so this is at this stage that further development begin to happen in in the zygote so that is it for cleavage formation so we've come to the end of this teaching i'll encourage you to subscribe to my youtube channel learn with chisholm great like this video share this video to your friends and comment on this video thank you very much